Hey everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek, coming to you from the shop today, and we are taking a look at the E-Flight FW190. Uh, this is a 1500 millimeter wingspan aircraft, and it looks awesome. They've characterized the shape of the airplane beautifully. They've got the awesome uh, scale landing gear at the right angle. It's an extremely nicely done warbird. Now the assembly is extremely simple, uh, and it goes together very fast, uh, and so you start out with the tails, those get slipped on over a carbon carry-through spar. Uh, you slide those into place, and then those are held in by one screw each, uh, screwed in from the bottom. So from there, this has a three-piece wing, so you drop the wing center section into place onto the fuselage. Uh, that's screwed in place by four screws, uh, and then you just pop the outer wing panels on into place, and those are a slip fit. You've got a plastic keeper there with a spar that carries through uh, and that's pretty much it. Now the airplane has some really nice details. They've got the scale three bladed prop. They've got the painted spiral spinner uh, which is fantastic and the other thing is on the propeller they've got the scale cooling fan as well that the real one had uh, which is awesome and it's functional in there it help keep things cool. Also it's got an assortment of pitot tubes and guns and those are all removable and they just screw into place. Those details are things that I really like to see in a model because it just adds so much to it, uh, you know, those details. Now the airplane has a nice big hatch and the nice thing about it is the whole hatch area uh, is lined with plastic. So you're not going to get that paint chipping that you could otherwise get uh, if you didn't have that plastic liner all around the edges. There's a tray that slips into place for the battery uh, and so that works really well. If you find that that stops working for you, you can, there's plenty of space. You can Velcro the battery directly to the floor in there and it'll be perfectly fine. Uh, and so that's it in terms of the assembly. You know, on the bench, the airplane looks fantastic. Uh, the paint scheme is based on a replica that's operated out of uh, the Plains of Fame Museum in Chino. Uh, they've done a good job characterizing the paint scheme. I do wish that the colors were just a touch darker to match the full scale a little bit better. Uh, but that being said, the paint work is nicely done uh, and it does look pretty good. The landing gear, I will say, are just incredible. They're extremely beefy. They look amazing and they characterize that shape perfectly. The wheels are extremely hard though and there is a soft tire option. I would recommend that especially if you're operating from a hard packed surface like concrete or dirt uh, because that does help cushion the landings a bit. Also, the tail wheel is extremely hard as well. So that's a two inch tire back there. I'd recommend uh, replacing it with a softer tire as well. Now the airplane is set up, it's got safe, it's got the full smart technology in it. Uh, and so the nice thing is that with the new NX radios, uh, you can set up safe directly in the forward programming menu now. You go into the forward programming menu, you turn safe on, uh, you have to select a channel uh, for safe to be assigned to. You want to use a channel that's obviously not part of the model if you can. Uh, and then from there, you actually have to assign that channel to a switch. So you go into your extended menus on the channel assign, assign a switch to whatever channel you've decided to place safe onto. Uh, and you can assign it to any channel between six and nine. And then from there, check that safe is working the way you want it in the forward programming menu, and that's it. Now, if you want to learn more about safe, I do have a discussion on that. Uh, there's a link in the corner that you can check out. And I talked through some tips on kind of how to use that. Obviously, the air, this is an aerobatic warbird, so you're gonna have more fun if you can do loops, rolls, and things like that. Uh, but you do want to work up to that, of course. So for the controls, if you start out with the recommendations in the manual, that's a good place to start. Where I finally ended up uh, for the ailerons, 10 millimeters up and down with no expo. For the elevator, 8 millimeters up and down and no expo there either. For the rudder, 25 millimeters left to right with 20% expo. Uh, and that's to help desensitize the steering, of course. Uh, and then for the flaps, I'm at 20 millimeters mid and 35 millimeters at the full flap position. And I have a 6% and an 18% down elevator mix. Uh, and that equates to about one millimeter of down elevator 
in the full flat position. You definitely do want to have that down elevator in there uh, because otherwise it will climb on you uh, when you drop the flaps. So for the battery, I'm using a Spectrum 6S 5000 pack, uh, the smart packs. I really like those batteries. I like the circuit protection that they have in there. And with this having the full smart, you get the full benefits of the telemetry by using the smart battery. Uh, and so the way that I have that placed in there, uh, you know, on the tray, I have the forward edge of the battery at the forward edge of the tray and that's where my battery ended up and that equates to a CG of approximately 110 to 115 millimeters as measured from uh, that root gun fairing where there's a break in the leading edge aft and if you look at the wing at the wing root there's a group of two panel lines about three quarters of an inch apart well if you place your finger just forward of that rear panel line there, uh, that's about where that CG falls in line. So obviously check it with a ruler, but that's ultimately where it kind of fell out. Flying the airplane, this is an extremely nice flyer. Uh, it's not the fastest Warbird, and nor does it have the largest verticals, but it's got fantastic power and it flies great. It maneuvers really well, uh, it locks in nice and true, uh, rolls are nice and axial, uh, it'll do any number of Warbird maneuvers you want to throw at it, and it doesn't skip a beat doing it. Compared to the P-51, I would say, actually, I do enjoy flying this model a little bit better. Uh, something about the shape of it and the way that it presents, it actually presents as a larger airplane than the P-51 tends to uh, in the air. But I will say that the P-51 does have just a touch more speed and a touch more vertical performance compared to this airplane. Takeoffs are easily manageable. You do have to read and react to the, the rudder. Expect to provide some right rudder on the takeoff, uh, but it's easily manageable. And on the landings, I will note that the airplane slows down beautifully with the flaps down, uh, but it does tend to bounce a bit. So a couple pointers there, keep the speed up a little bit on it, uh, and that will help. Uh, and also, if you can touch one wheel first, something like that, that will help as well. I will say too, the airplane does come with a tank and flying with the tank, I didn't notice any difference in the performance. However, it did require a little bit of up trim compared to clean with no tank. So just keep that in mind. So let's take this out to the field. Uh, we took this one out to the desert and filmed it out there. I have flown it on asphalt as well and it re responds very much the same uh, in terms of the ground handling. Uh, but uh, let's give you guys a flight and then we'll come back and we'll wrap this up.
All right, there we have the E-Flight FW190. This is a really nice looking model. It flies beautifully. Uh, I like the three-piece wing. It makes transporting it really easy. You just take the outer panels off, and wheel it into the back of the car, pop those on, and you're ready to go. And it's got the hard-mounted connectors, which simplifies it even more. Uh, and so the airplane flies beautifully. It looks fantastic. Uh, I, I really enjoy the airplane quite a bit. Now, I do plan to repaint this at some point, so uh, when that time comes, be on the lookout for that. I'm just going to do a quick, uh, quick and dirty repaint, not do the full refinish. The finish on the airplane is actually quite smooth and looks pretty good, uh, so I'm just going to kind of paint right over it, and so uh, be on the lookout for that when the time comes. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow along on social media at The RC Geek. Subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you at the field.